The World is No More Flat, as seen by Thomas Friedman about two decades ago. Amid the rise of protectionism, setting rules for global commerce has become tricky and full of challenges. And against this backdrop, trade ministers of over 100 countries are meeting on February 26. The three-day meeting will be eventful as India and some other countries will oppose some moves which they believe would dilute the core of World Trade Organization. One among them is the proposal to make investment facilitation a part of the formal WTO negotiations. India has strongly objected to efforts of pushing the proposal forward on the reasoning that WTO is a body to discuss trade and investment is not a trade issue. But countries with deep pockets like China, South Korea and the Gulf nations are likely to push for the inclusion of investment facilitation agenda in ministerial meet. In April 2017, 14 developing and least developed members had proposed an informal WTO dialogue on investment facilitation for development. Primarily mooted by China, the aim of this agreement was to facilitate global investment in the same way of global trade agreements. Proponents argue that investment facilitation would help in effective implementation of investment policies of the member countries, making it more efficient and transparent. 130 member countries, including China, South Korea, and the Gulf nations like the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, are the major proponents of the move, which makes it a plurilateral agreement or joint statement initiative. The proposal will be binding for only the signatory members. Since India has opposed it, it won't be applicable to India. Among major countries, the US is sitting out of the agreement. Sri Lanka and Pakistan are also not a part of it. Experts argue matters that fall under the purview of the WTO essentially pertain to multilateral trade relations. Joint statement initiatives or plurilateral negotiations are initiated by a group of WTO members on certain issues without adhering to the rules on consensus decision-making of the multilateral body. India is fundamentally against plurilateral pacts on multilateral platforms such as the WTO. India's key contention has been that investment is not trade per se, and if certain member countries actually want to negotiate the subject, they should do it outside the formal structure of the WTO. I am entirely in agreement because the systemic issue of the WTO being a multilateral consensus-based organization, where even the poorest of the developing countries will have a say, that will be uh, given the go-by if this is allowed. This is a systemic issue. It's not the content. India can live with the content any day of the agreement which is on the table at the moment, to my mind. But if we allow this to happen, then poorer developing countries and uh, even uh, the middle-income developing countries, most of them would be excluded from the decision-making process. And it would be or take it on a, or leave it. By, and we will go ahead. And uh, the plurilaterals will become the uh, way uh, for the future rather than the multilateral uh, system that we have been following so far. So it will mean a, an entire change in the, the way the WTO functions and the way decisions are taken. An Indian delegation statement in a WTO meeting of the General Council held in December said the investment aspects of trade are already being dealt with by means of existing WTO agreements, namely GATS and TRIMS. The GATS treaty deals with the supply of services through commercial presence in the territory of any other member country. Its objective is to create a reliable and predictable system of international rules for trade and services. The TRIMS deals with certain trade-related investment measures that can restrict and distort trade. Experts believe that investment decisions should solely be the investors alone, in this case, the investing country, and no policy framework can promise the quality of the investment and the returns on the same. What drives investment? Of course, there are issues, things like market size, then uh, there are, uh, you know, the uh, availability of infrastructure, you know, uh, what we call uh, um, uh, you know, the critical resources that uh, investors need uh, to maximize their profits. So, so these are the considerations on which investment flows from uh, you know the home country, which is an investing country, to a host country. Yeah. Uh, so, so for someone to come and say, look, you know, you know, we have just uh, 
change your investment uh, policies and make it more um, uh, transparent. And this is what the investment facilitation wants. Make it more transparent, make, make it more predictable and, and stuff like that and have a set of procedures. Now, that is not something that is palatable, I would say. Experts point out that WTO's Doha declaration at the Ministerial Conference of 2001 envisaged the negotiations on investments could only be on the basis of a decision taken by explicit consensus. So, if certain countries want the investment agreement to materialize, then they should propose to make amendments in the Doha declaration. But whether that will garner consensus from all 164 member countries is debatable. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. He's making plans for an early retirement. Business Standard